Welcome back to the Zero Weakness Podcast, where we talk about how to be a better lifter, how to be a better coach, and everything in between. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another episode of the Zero Weakness Podcast. Today I'm joined by a very special guest, 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 Khan Stevenson. Welcome. Uh, how are we all? You? I'm good. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> good. How are you? <laughs> All right, we need to introduce you to the people. Who are you? What do you do? Um, so I'm Carl Stevenson. I'm a strength coach and um, I'm in partnership with Thomas up in Mackay to bring Zero to Mackay, which has been um, awesome and um, it's pumping along, which is great. Um, I'm a powerlifter. I've mm-hmm. been competing for roughly five, this will be almost six years this year competing yeah, nice. in the sport. Um, prior to that, I played rugby league. Um, to a somewhat semi-professional level, um, did some shot putting and stuff as well, and then um, after some injuries, here we are um, in the in the world of powerlifting. So for days, that's that's always the story. A real athlete switches to powerlifting because they get <laughs> fucked up doing the other things, the real things. Um, let's focus on the powerlifting side of things, and then we'll get into talking about uh, Zero Mackay and um, what that's all about and what you guys are doing up there, which is awesome. Um, so you said you've been powerlifting for five or six years. How did how did that even start out for you? Like, how did you even discover powerlifting in the first place? So I was, um, yeah, funny enough, I was playing rugby. And um, at the time, I was basically on my way out. I um, had a few injuries and stuff like this and a, um, a couple of serious head knocks. Mm-hmm. From there, I went and saw the doctor and he said to me that I needed to have 12 months off, no contact sport. And then um, I ended up um, going to the gym and I was like, all right, well, if I can't do um, the sport that I've been playing since I was a kid, I'm going to try and find another way to, I guess, express that passion for my love of com- being competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, I then met Dean Ilgath. Obviously, mm-hmm. we we're in partnership with Zero in Mackay. Yep. And um, yeah, from there, he kind of said I was benching in the gym one day and he, he um, politely, as Dean does, um, said that my technique is shit, but he <laughs> thinks I could... Um, he thinks I could be be decent. So if I um, learned how to bench and stuff like this properly, and you know, just typical like feet everywhere, yeah, flat back, not touching my chest, like bum off the seat, sign sort of things. So um, I then told him about four times in a row that I was going to come do a bench session with him and um, James Gilbert. Yep. And um, I didn't go. I, um, <laughs> yeah, I um, decided that it wasn't a priority of mine to learn this powerlifting thing. Uh-huh. And then um, one day I was um, going to the gym with uh, Reese Finlay. Yep. And a uh, little to uh, to my discretion was we, we were uh, benching uh-huh. and we're in the powerlifting room. And um, I walked in there and there was about 30 people in there. And then, um, yeah, basically off we went and I learned how to do a bit of powerlifting and stuff, learned how to squat bench and deadlift a little bit better. And then uh, there was a comp in Townsville with um, your beloved PA. Mm-hmm. And um, a few of the guys were like, oh, there's this comp, maybe you should look at doing it. So, and that was about three weeks out, four weeks out. Yeah, nice. And I just went, yeah, let's do it. So mm-hmm. I think I squatted 140. This is in sleeves, by the way. It's not, it's not very good, but um, I squatted 140. <laughs> I um, benched 147.5 <laughs> and I deadlifted 220. Um, and then after that, yeah, kind of just um, fell in love with the sport and off we went. Yeah, nice, 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 nice. So you started off in PA and I believe you did a few nationals? Yes, yeah. So um, my first year in competing, I went and did like their version, I guess, like of NQ States, I guess. Mm-hmm. I went and did that. And then after that, I got an invite to uh, Junior Nats. So I went and competed at Junior Nationals. Then the year after was Nats, um, so I competed at uh, NQ Games, which is up in, um, you know, where uh, Adam Warnock and all those guys are in Ely. Yep. So I competed with all those guys, um, you know, um, Tyrone, Sintaloo, all those boys. Yeah. Um, that was an awesome meet. And then, um, yeah, went to Nats that year, and then after that I decided that um, I wanted to, just with a few things that were done... Um, away from the sport mm-hmm. um, I guess more so in the sense of not being able to help out at home due to the affiliation of GPC mm-hmm. I made the decision that I really want to be a part of what's going on in Mackay um, and I can't to the full extent that I want to so I end up going to um, GPC that, that following year yeah yeah it's just one of the unfortunate things mm. about PA is like not being able to go to those local meets that you only had at Mackay you know mm. the GPC and the novice meets and um, it not being uh, PA, I mean, you could get in trouble if you were caught helping out in an official capacity. But, well, I did, but... <laughs> <laughs> you just do it anyway. Yeah. Most people do. You know, lots yeah. of people do. Um, 
Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So uh, fast forward a little bit. Now you're in prep for GPC Nationals right now. What are you hoping to hit at that comp? Um, well, I guess like, well, I'd, I'd love to go 850 plus. That's kind of, I guess, mm-hmm. our plan that we've spoken about coming into the meet and stuff. Um, as far as numbers go, I really think I can squat 340. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, 350 may or may not be there, but um, 340 is definitely a number I think I'm, I'm capable of hitting right now. For sure. Um, bench, um, 200 plus, I haven't hit 200. Uh, at, I've never even attempted 200 in the gym or at comp. Yep. Um, but I think 210 is looking very doable. For sure. Um, and with my deadlift, um, it's feeling pretty good and it's actually moving and uh, I guess positionally it's probably the most efficient I've ever been. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's being expressed now in the peak, which is awesome. And I think, um, yeah, around that 320 to 330 mark um, would be really nice. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Oh, that's really cool, man. All right, well, let's let's talk about um, Mackay and, and Zero Mackay. And I, I guess the best place to start is, is maybe a little bit of a an insight into the, the history of, of powerlifting up there. So um, as you mentioned, the three of us have Zero Mackay together, yourself, um, Dean Ilgith, and me. Uh, Dean, I look at as like he's he's the father of powerlifting and Mackay. Like without yeah. without him being on the scene and as invested in it as he has been for the last few years. Thanks, James, for making all the noise. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so without him being as invested in it as he has, I, I'd be pretty certain it wouldn't exist in the kind of capacity that it does. Um, so shout out for Dean for being such a strong promoter of the sport for so long and just such in such a positive way for sure like he just he just wants everyone to do their best and wants everyone to do well and it's bred a really 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 amazing community up there um so for me personally you know i got immersed in that community because i started coaching dean he was the first person i was coaching up there and he's just been uh you know praising zero and our services for so long uh, and we grew such a big following up there and um you know what what sort of happened from that like khan just mentioned the powerlifting room they were all training out of a snap fitness and that snap fitness because of the work that dean was doing saw the investment in powerlifting that was going in and created a powerlifting room for it up there it was a dedicated room powerlifting equipment power lifters um, and that's where powerlifting has been existing in Mackay for the last i don't know six years yeah about six seven years yeah uh, up until now zero um and so, like, where where did it start for you? Because, you know, obviously you were doing powerlifting, but then eventually you turned that into a business, mm-hmm. started coaching and doing therapy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and now you're in the gym. So how, how did the, the business side of things evolve for you? Um, well, basically, when I started, like, um, I guess, like, it's the typical story of a lot of people that probably competed in powerlifting. You start a powerlifting, you start to get better at it, um, and then people start to come to you for advice. Mm, buy my so, ebook. Yes, pretty much. Yeah, not fourteen ninety nine. DM me for coaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, please. And then um, what ended up happening was, yeah, I just had a couple of um, clients I was already kind of training. Um, basically, just reached out and said, "Hey, like this powerlifting thing looks fun. Mm. Um, you know, I think there's some there's the beauty of strength sports um, that creates empowerment through getting stronger." Mm-hmm. You know? Um, and basically from there that's how it kind of started and I had a few people reach out and then slowly I started to uh, build a business through that and then all of a sudden I went from like I guess coaching like um, or training general population into some sort of um, physique work and then into uh, now really just powerlifters Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess the transition was that was of that was me training for powerlifting competing in powerlifting getting better at powerlifting people seeing that and then wanting to come over and learn how to powerlift. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, yeah, kind of just build a community based off that, and um, which has then led to us obviously having enough clientele, and then all of a sudden it was like the only thing I was really coaching, and um, then expressing that through the hours of my car. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the very typical sort of, I guess, um, I was powerlifting, people wanted to learn how to powerlift, um, in Mackay at the time there wasn't a lot of coaches doing it mm-hmm. um, which they'd probably helped I guess with that, with that as well mm-hmm. um, and then obviously through MPL holding competitions taking teams away um, you know handling Dean at comps and stuff like that uh, whilst you were coaching him and things like that and yeah it kind of just allowed us to I guess express uh, what we were doing with our clients but also what MPL was creating as well so once again coming back to probably what Dean was doing with that behind the scenes mm. um, which then obviously helped all of us that were a part of MPL too for sure 
for sure and so when did the idea of a gym come into your head um june last year <laughs> <laughs> um so like if, when people talk about like zero makai they're like so how did this start yeah because i was about to say i want to hear your version of the story because uh, i know what the story is yeah yeah but i want to hear your version of the story because obviously you had an idea of your gym in your head because yes. that's how this came about in the first place yes i want to hear your version of the story of how zero makai was born so like in june so i believe um, you were passing through in June, July last year. Is that correct? It's around that August. Time. August. Yeah. yeah Start of August. Go. Yeah. So we were like midst of COVID and I was kind of like in Mackay and I was kind of, we're just coming out of it. Mm. And I was kind of like, you know, we've um, been saving pretty hard. You know, we've uh, a very established business now. You know, there's, um, what's my next move? For me, my fear of, of always being, being the same as what I was last year. I mm. don't want to be in the same spot as I was the year before. And I was kind of thinking from a business standpoint, what's next for me? And then um, I spoke to Dean about it a couple of times and it was just kind of was like, is it the right time, right move, all these sort of things. And then, um, yeah, I was kind of like logistically thinking, what do I actually want to open? What sort of gym is this going to be? Like, is it going to be like a rehab performance area, center? Is it going to be a strength gym? Like, what are we actually going to do? What's going to be our niche? Um, and then how are we going to attract and market towards that? Mm. And then um, you were passing through in August and um, kind of just like reached out and said to uh, myself and Dean hey do you want to let's catch up for dinner mm. so we went for dinner at uh, probably the, the worst place in Mackay to go for dinner but oh, those were the <laughs> legitimately the worst barbecued meat I've ever had in my life Dean's like oh we'll go to um, we'll go out to Slate Point I'm like why are we going to Slate Point <laughs> like there's like the Austral like, there's so many other nicer places and he's like no nah, we'll go because you know the beach and stuff and I'm like the oh. middle of the night yeah yeah <laughs> And um, so I was like, well, the food's not that good, but they got, you know, $5 beers, so I'm going to rip them. <laughs> but, uh, so um, we're having dinner and stuff, and then we kind of just got talking about, like, just business in general. Um, and just asking how things were with myself, like you asking how things were with myself, and then I floated the idea of what I want to do in the next um, 12 months kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then um, I believe you went to, like, you went to Hamilton Island with Dean and Carly, mm-hmm. and then just got talking and just were like you know and then um talking about the idea of potentially doing something yeah and then um my sunday afternoon i got this message from you and um i remember it was like this big novel of like zero McCart, like what zero could be like you know just like just in general of like what we what would happen what we could do and i remember applying saying i'm in <laughs> <laughs> um and then literally i think we got on the phone was it maybe the monday or tuesday for a zoom call logistically yeah. trying to work things out i guess on how it would happen and then the week after, or the week after that, we um, paid for our Chinese, like our equipment order. <laughs> that was basically off we went. Yeah, it happened pretty quick, didn't it? It did, yeah. We didn't even have a company structure or like, um, or anything done up. We just ordered everything. Yeah. No, that's how we do it. Just <laughs> jump in head first. Don't was, ask questions. Yeah, so that's my, what's your version of how that happened? Well, pretty much that. Pretty much that. Like, I remember going out to dinner and I... I, I I had thought of the idea of a gym in Mackay for years, yeah. just based on what they were doing in Snap, but it, it never quite worked because everyone that was heavily involved in MPL, so Mackay Powerlifting, um, is, is pretty much uh, FIFO workers, right? Mm. Everyone's miners that fly in, fly out, and like the idea of, hey, quit your two hundred fifty thousand dollar a year job to slave away in a gym for twenty bucks an hour. That sounds like a great <laughs> idea, doesn't it? Like I, I just. I, I didn't really think it ever had legs because there was no one that could really lead from the front. And I, I didn't go up there and didn't go out to dinner with any intention of floating this idea of no. opening a gym. It was like, it was not on my mind at all. And then you brought it up and I'm like, oh God, now my head's doing the thing. Yeah. It's doing the thing again, <laughs> just like it did with Daniel. It's yeah. doing the thing. All right, here comes gym number three. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, just uh spoke to dean and said you know do you think khan would be interested in if i float this idea because at dinner i remember specifically it was like a two one to two year plan for yes you. yeah um and that was exactly what happened with daniel with Southside. it was like a two-year plan for him and i'm pretty much just like hey you want to turn that two-year plan into like a next week plan <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> yeah. we're ordering equipment let's do it yeah yeah I, uh, it was funny though because I was like I remember talking to you about it prop like when we actually had the zoom call and stuff and logistically going through things and um, you were like I'm only in if it's before March 
And um, this is like last year. So like you're like, I'm only in bef- if it's like we're doing this before March next year. So like 2021. Yeah. And um, I was like, yeah, cool. Let's let's do it. And <laughs> I remember like we were ordering stuff and as we we're ordering things, like we always had this idea in our head where we're like, okay, cool. And the gym's doing like really well. We've got a really good community there. Yeah. Um, memberships are really great. Like just, it's just a good place to train like Mm. there's just a lot of really good people that are involved now and um with that there's also people that are just driven and you know it it creates lack of motivation but creates driven people and i think um that's also part of the parcel of strength sports as well and especially niche strength sports like powerlifting and stuff like that Mm. um but i remember like when we order equipment like i I remember sending through the first order and then we went back forwards and back and forward a few times and it was like now we need more now we need more now we need more and then it went to the point now of where we've just doubled our leak of water mm. um, we've just put in more like a bit of an update for a couple of pieces of machines that we think that we need in the gym um, and then talking about further expansion mm. in the next 12 months and stuff so yeah it's very exciting yeah I mean it's a, it's exploded up there in a way that neither of us could have predicted mm. but I think a big part of it is like you guys always had the community, mm. but it was headless. Mm. There was because it was as part of a commercial gym with no owner of the room, no coach of the room, no leader of the room. There was, you know, there was a couple of figureheads, but no one was really like, "I am the guy," mm. you know. And one thing I'm really proud of with Zero and now with Zero Gyms being multiplying. Um, is the kind of culture that we create and that only happens with leadership Mm. and i think with with you and uh you know and partially dean and of course becca and carly and you know you guys leading from the front in that way it's now like removed you from that environment where there couldn't be leadership put someone as a firm leader uh and that gives people a much safer environment to grow the community which is why it's exploded like it's the community was already there it was already cohesive it was already existing but it was so segregated because of a lack of leadership. Yep. And I think now that the leadership is formalized, it's just exploded and it's so incredible to see. Yeah, and I'm really excited to see like where, like we haven't even had an open day yet. <laughs> That's, mm. um, it's like, there's a lot of things that I guess that um, are happening right now that I think are gonna really lead the way and create that path for what's next. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I think a lot of people don't realize, of course the people external to Mackay won't realize this at all, but even the people in Mackay may not realize how much stuff we have coming. Yeah. Like it's yeah. a skeleton of the gym it's going to be yeah. at the moment. Like on the way we've got, uh, I think six Texas bars, you know, yep. four Texas deadlift bars, a squat bar, power bar maybe. Um, we've got, uh, I think seven or eight of our custom zero weight trees. We've got four custom zero platforms. We've got a ridiculous amount of Alico. I think it's like five ton or something like that. We'll have close to seven. We'll have over seven ton of Alico calibrated plates in the gym once everything comes. Which is that's crazy. Shit loads more than any other gym in the country has mm. at, at an estimate. The only gym that may come close is somewhere like Ruchi's, but I'm pretty sure that'll put us above them in terms of the calibrated plates that we've got there. Yeah, which is unreal because the Ruchi's gym is just incredible. For sure, it's an incredible space, and yeah. I think the, this space is going to rival something like that you know, as like a, a powerlifting paradise. But I mean, the really cool thing about uh, Zero Mackay and now what it's brought to the table with Zero as a whole is like Zero um, Gold Coast and uh, Brisbane primarily focus on powerlifting and taking athletes and, and doing strength training with them. You guys, of course, have that, but you guys have such a strong uh, presence in like the figure stuff mm. as well with, with Becca being like a champion. She's a pro now, right? Yeah. With yep. Becca being a pro competitor, like that's a, such a such a big addition to, to what Zero is and what Zero has. And I'm really, really excited to see what that then looks like over time and how it continues to grow. For sure. Mm. For sure. No, it's all very exciting. I think it's just um, just like... You know when you think of it all the pieces for the puzzle, mm. but then like the puzzle keeps getting bigger, yeah. and then you got to find more pieces. Yeah, yeah. It's like that's what I um, like. Somebody I was talking to somebody the other day um, who owns like a couple of cafes in town, uh-huh. and they just said like, you know, how is everything going? And I said it's it's one of those ones where like, here's the puzzle piece. I've got all the pieces, and then it's like now the puzzle piece is bigger. But it's good it's bigger because now I need to find more pieces to that puzzle. Hmm. And pieces of that puzzle is most of the time people. Yeah. So um, finding the right people, finding the right people to fit into that puzzle and then also finding, um, I guess, kind of like what where you fit in that puzzle and what piece you are. So hmm. I think that just allows us to express that not only Zero Makai, but also the support and leadership that we get from you guys as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a really important 
note like it's for people listening for this even if you are not in the business space but especially if you are running some sort of strength gym or strength coaching business um, like a lot of people are looking at something like zero now and seeing the expansion and the growth and and probably wondering you know what's the point of difference how is this possible like people would assume that we've just got money coming out of our ears or something like that which just isn't the reality yeah. it's like as you get bigger and bigger your buying power becomes more so buying stuff becomes easier mm-hmm. so we can expand quickly in that way um, all the equipment the growth everything has been born of the hard work that we've put in to generate the money through the business to, to put it back in like I don't work an extra job I came into this poor as fucking just poor you know i didn't come into this with money like look at the original photos of the gym we've grown and so like if you're looking to if you're thinking how are we going to expand how are we going to create a business model like like these guys are showcasing it's really about planning for the business you want not Mm -hmm. servicing the business that you have Mm -hmm. and what i mean by that specifically is the one thing that we have on our side now that we've got all these extra coaches on board it's like it would be easy to see how the product of coaching can be diluted Mm -hmm. the product of nutrition coaching or training coaching programming whatever can be diluted because you assume that every coach is different what we've done is created this model where we can take a person apply the model to the person so this person as a new coach can do exactly what i do what you do what james does what daniel does what we all do after that's what the zero coach development system is right and so like if you are looking to grow if you're looking at us as inspiration or something like that that is the number one piece of advice that i can give you you is start to take the thoughts that you have like how you run your business how you run your coaching your nutrition coaching your training everything and think how can i teach someone to be me mm-hmm. if i can make another me then i can grow yep okay all coaches get stuck at some point because they're limited by their own capacity that was you like a year ago yeah you had so many people and it's like how the fuck can i grow mm-hmm. So your immediate thought is, I need to bring another coach on board. And that'll never work because you'll always be looking for the perfect coach and the perfect coach in your head is you cloned yeah. and they don't exist. Yeah. So like for me, that's what I was always like. And now it's like, well, I can clone myself by taking my coaching knowledge and just putting that in someone else because I've got a system for that. Mm. That's what you guys need to do listening to this if you're wanting to, to grow your coaching business. You can't look at it as looking for the perfect coach that fits your model. It's taking your model and making it fit another coach. Mm. Yeah, for sure. And I think just part of that's probably like understanding your model. Mm. Like there's a lot of like one thing I probably learned especially was like system. Like mm. I didn't have an itemized or you know, re- rehearse sort of system that was in place for how I'm going to approach everything. I kind of took it on as it came on. Mm. Um, where now it just allows you to streamline with keeping the same quality that you've got whilst also being able to teach it the same quality to everyone else. Yeah. And that's exactly what I guess I've learned through the z- like zero, especially the coaching systems, mm. you know, the coaching systems, um, uh, they break everything right down like um, in the way that you teach it and the way that's being taught um, through that education system is where it's broken down to the common uh, conceptions of coaching mm. how to apply them to everyone and then from there being able to create the exact sort of replicant of that model where it's squat bench and deadlift that you want to see and create so and then from there you're going to streamline straight away yeah 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 it's 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 really cool and I, like my coaching has my, the the sword of my coaching has gotten so much sharper since teaching it to other people because it yeah. allows me to call myself out on all my bullshit yeah, yeah. It allows me to be like i say this all the time do i actually mean this is this actually real is this scientific does it make sense that forces me to seek out more knowledge seek out mentors get smarter and get better at this stuff so like the sooner you can sort of start to take the model out of your head and put it into a system where you may be able to teach it even if you're not at the stage of being ready to teach it Mm. having that set up early is going to be a great thing for your own coaching and for the future of your business as well this kind of took a weird turn it did but (laughs) um here we are and uh, one foot in the mud one foot out of the mud that's right (laughs) but that's that's, right it seems like it's the um the, the conversation that we have most most times anyway exactly. <laughs> talk about this thing go to that go to that go to that so well all, all the perks congratulations this is the longest zero podcast episode by about double um do you have anything else to add Khan? um no and apart from i told you so probably uh, but it would be because you know your boy can <laughs> wing wag yep and um here we are so apart from that though thanks for having me on man it's been, no uh, man been a pleasure thanks for joining us if you're ever in the Mackay area go check out zero Mackay. say hello to khan they'll look after you up there mm. it's a sick gym amazing gym amazing people uh thanks for listening and we will catch you next time See bye ya. 
Thank you so much for listening to the Zero Podcast. If you want more information, head to our Instagram, zero underscore weakness, hit the link in the bio for all of our services and any information on upcoming workshops and events. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review so we can have a broader reach and answer more people's questions. Thank you once more.